Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Daniel chapter 12, beginning at verse 9. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for being the fountain of wisdom, for being the giver of every good and perfect gift that comes down from you, the Father of lights. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to enlighten our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your word. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would give us the mind of Christ and renew it day after day as our hearts are filled with the engrafted word, that engrafted word which is able to save our souls. Lord, we thank you for giving us the ears of the learned because the Holy Spirit takes the things of Christ and makes them real to us as faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for the renewal of the inner man, though the outward man is perishing. We thank you, Lord, for making all things new, <laughs> beginning with us in the new birth. And so now that we are on the narrow road that only a few people find, continue to strengthen us with all power through the power of the Holy Spirit as we are sanctified through your amazing grace because of your love that you demonstrated for us. For God, you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, Lord, how we thank you for having our names found written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Lord, we pray that you would continue the good work that you started in us. And we believe with all of our heart that you will bring it to completion on the day of Jesus Christ. And we look forward to that soon coming day. Hence why we are watching and praying always that we can be accounted worthy to escape all the things that are about to come on the earth and stand before you, the Son of Man. Bless us now as we show us in your word what it is that you would have us to know and understand as you continue to reveal the patterns because there is nothing that is new that is done under the sun. For it had already been of old time and therefore, we look at the patterns to see how you acted in the past, knowing that you're going to act the same way in the future. For you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Bless us as we learn of you. And we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask it all. Amen. Well, hallelujah, saints of God. It's so good to be back with another teaching installment of when the temple in heaven is opened. Everything will change. And I'm not going to be long with you today. Just want to show you the pattern based upon the solar eclipses. Amen. The pattern has continued. And of course, this pattern continues because of what happened on May 19th. Amen. May 19th, 2024 has been confirmed that the Iranian president um, died in a helicopter crash in Iran, him and along with uh, the foreign minister. And so they've been looking for like the last... 14, 15, 16 hours ever since it happened early uh, on the 19th in the morning. And uh, it's finally been confirmed. And so I didn't want to put anything out until it was confirmed. And so now that it's been confirmed, I want to show you the pattern. Amen. The pattern that is based upon the solar eclipses. Hallelujah. We've talked about this numerous times on this channel, but let's hammer home the point that there's nothing new done under the sun. So the pattern tells the story of what's to come. On August 21st, 2017, the Great American Solar Eclipse happened. 33 days later, we had September 23rd, 2017. It was the Revelation 12, verses 1 and 2 sign in the heavens. Eight days later, on October 1st, 2017, the worst mass shooting in American history happened at the Harvest Festival in Sin City, a.k.a. Las Vegas. 
the same pattern repeated beginning on April 8th, 2024, seven years later, six years, six months, six weeks, six days after the first great American solar eclipse. The great American solar eclipse part two happened on April 8th, 2024. 33 days later, there has to be a heavenly sign. And what was the heavenly sign? Well, on May 11th, 2024, there was CME signs in the heavens. The geomagnetic storm was the most powerful to affect Earth since October 2003 and produced aurorae at far lower altitudes than usual in both the northern and southern hemispheres. You saw those pictures eight days ago of the pink skies and the different vibrant colors all around the planet in places where you never usually saw them at. So this was a heavenly sign following the pattern that happened in 2017, 33 days later. So eight days later, there has to be some type of significant death, right? On October 1st, 2017, it was the worst mass shooting in American history at the Harvest Festival in Sin City, right? Made world, lot, world headlines. Well, on May 19th, 2024, it was the death of the Iranian president and the foreign minister, right? This is the pattern. And the wise understand these things, but the wicked, they don't understand what's going on. They don't see these things, right? They think it's foolishness, right? They think it's just hocus pocus. They just think that it's, you know, uh, mumbo jumbo, right? <laughs> but what did Jesus said? If he has told us, uh, you know, if he has told us earthly things that we don't believe, how can we believe if he tells us heavenly things? Right. But praise be to God that we have the mind of Christ and we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so we understand the whole gamut. Amen. Because the mind of Christ, hallelujah, which is in us and is renewed day after day through the power of the Holy Spirit as our minds are stayed on him. He continues to take the things in Christ and make them real to us so that we can understand because we have the spirit of wisdom. And so we see this pattern. Amen. So how does this pattern connect? Right. How does Iran and the United States connect, right? How does Iran and the United States connect, right? <laughs> right? And what does the heavenly signs have to do with all of this? Well, what's next? <clears throat> Amen. Iran is the catalyst that brings about the day of the Lord, right? According to the prophecies, for example. Let me just take you one place in Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13 is the judgment of Babylon. Amen. Isaiah chapter 13 is the judgment of Babylon. And we see in verse 6, it's the day of the Lord. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. And so who's implicated in this? Right? Who's implicated in the day of the Lord that comes like a destruction from the Almighty? Well, the Bible tells us that it is the nation of Iran, right? Verse 17, Isaiah chapter 13. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, against two, Babylon, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it, right? So the Medes, which is the ancient name for the modern territory that we see today known as Iran, is implicated in the day of the Lord when this all goes down. And who are the Medes against? Well, the Bible says that they're against Babylon, verse 19. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Right, so when the day of the Lord comes like a destruction from the Almighty, right, on the day when God stirs up the Medes against Babylon, right, who don't delight in silver and as for gold, they find no use for it. On that day when Babylon is destroyed, God says he's going to make it like Sodom and Gomorrah. If you look on a map, right, if you even go to the land and I've been there, you can't find it. There is no trace of Sodom and Gomorrah. God can't lie. Babylon the Great, the United States of America, is going to be made like Sodom and Gomorrah, guaranteed. Amen. So, back to uh, my note. Amen. 
Iran is the catalyst that brings about the day of the Lord, according to the prophecies, which will lead to the total destruction of Babylon the Great, the United States of America. We just read that. And the failed invasion of Gog and Magog. Right. So we also know that this day is linked. Right. The day of the Lord, the fall of Babylon, the rise of the Medes, which is Iran. Hallelujah. It's all linked to the battle of Gog and Magog. Amen. We see the battle of Gog and Magog. Another name for Iran is mentioned, which is Persia. Prophecy against Gog. You know these things, child of God, because you have the spirit of wisdom. Ezekiel 38, verse 5. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, with them, all of them with shield and helmet. So the first nation that is mentioned, right, that is with Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, right, the first nation that God says is with Gog of Magog is Persia. And of course, you know, Persia is another name for Iran, right? Iran is known by Persia, is known by the Medes, is known by Media, and is known by Elam. When you study all of those scriptures about Iran, you can always see that they are implicated when the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. And so we go to verse 39, and we see something interesting that God says happens at the same time when he destroys this invading host that comes against Israel. God says this about that day in Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 6. And I will send a fire on Magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Okay, well, the Bible tells us <laughs> who is the one that dwells carelessly in the isles that God says he's going to send a fire. At the same time that he sends this fire on Magog, he's also going to send a fire among them that dwell carelessly in the isles. Well, if we go to Isaiah, amen, Isaiah chapter 47, we see who sits carelessly in the isles, the humiliation of Babylon. You see, it's all connected, amen. It's all connected, hallelujah. God says this in Isaiah chapter 47, verse 8. Therefore, hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures that dwellest carelessly, there it goes, that sayest in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Okay? So it's all wrapped up in the same day, the cloudy and dark day. Amen. God says specifically that this is the day that he has spoken about in Ezekiel. Chapter 39, verse 8, Behold, it is come and it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. Amen. <laughs> so we've gone to the prophets and specifically in the book of Isaiah, right, which was written before Ezekiel. And this is the day that God has spoken about. Amen. This is the day that God has spoken about, the day of the Lord, when this all happens. Amen. So this is why we're seeing this connection. OK, based around the two great American solar eclipses. Amen. This pattern that's repeating. Amen. That had its fulfillment on May 19th, 2024, with the death of the Iranian president and the foreign minister. Right. And so what's next? What's God telling us is that's going to happen next? Well, Iran is the catalyst. Right. That brings about the day of the Lord, according to the prophecies, which will lead to the total destruction of Babylon, the great the United States of America and the failed invasion of Gog and Magog of Israel, which will coincide with the harvest of the earth, which is the rapture, as Jesus Christ comes down upon the clouds. Well, we see this in another place with Iran, right? We see this in another place in Jeremiah. This has been getting a lot of traction on a lot of prophecy news channels. We've been talking about this for years, right? Jeremiah chapter 49, right? You got the 444 code. 444 is code for rapture. Amen. The judgment on Elam. Okay, so Elam is another name for Iran, right? We saw the Medes, we saw Persia, we saw Elam. These are all the ancient names for modern day Iran. And so here we see the 444 code and we see Jesus, right, releasing the four winds upon Elam as he sets his throne in Persia. This is on the day when he comes down upon the clouds. Amen. 
Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 34, the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief of their might. Here it goes. Here goes the 444 code. And upon Elam I will bring the four winds, four winds, from the four quarters, from the four quarters of heaven, and will scatter them toward all those winds. Well, how many winds are there? Four, right? There's four winds, right? They're going to come from the four quarters of heaven, and he's going to scatter them toward all those winds, right? Four, 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 right? And there shall be no nation whither the outcast of Elam shall not come. Amen. We see the same thing happening in Revelation chapter 7, the 444 code, verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds, so four angels, four corners, four winds, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. So this right here is happening right before Elam is going to be judged, right? Because according to Jeremiah, right, when those four winds are released, that means that the 144,000 are sealed. Amen. And that's a whole nother teaching that I'm not going to get into on this brief teaching today. Amen. So what we're looking at here in Revelation chapter 7 verse 1 is something that happens right before Jeremiah 49. Amen. Because in Jeremiah 49, the four winds are released. Right? And the four winds are released and aimed at Elam. Right? Judgment on Elam. And upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven and will scatter them toward all those winds. Right? So the 144,000 are already sealed when this happens. Amen. And what happens? We see Jesus Christ setting his throne upon Elam. Verse 38. And I will set my throne in Elam and will destroy from there the kings and the princes, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is all cloudy day language. This is all day of the Lord language. Right? This is when the apocalypse begins. Amen. And so this is the harvest. This is the rapture. Amen. Because we see Jesus Christ coming like lightning upon a cloud in the book of Revelation and Revelation chapter 14. Right. Here goes the 144,000 again sealed. And then we see Jesus Christ on the cloud. Amen. And I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one set like the son of man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that said on the cloud, Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Right? That's the rapture. Amen. This all coincides with the releasing of the four winds upon everybody that's under God's feet. Right? Everybody that's under God's feet, the four winds are released. Right? Everybody that's caught up in the cloud at the time of the harvest, we're raptured. Amen. You see, because Iran is the catalyst that brings about the day of the Lord, according to the prophecies, which will lead to the total destruction of Babylon the Great, the United States of America, and the failed invasion of Gog and Magog of Israel, which will coincide with the harvest of the earth, rapture, as Jesus Christ comes down upon the clouds to rain hailstones and coals of fire on the planet as the greatest earthquake in human history levels the third beast kingdom, that leopard kingdom that has four heads and four wings of a fowl, dominated by that great city which rules over all the kings of the earth, Babylon the Great. Thus begins the day of the Lord, which allows from the ashes the fourth beast kingdom to take over with the Antichrist, false prophet, and the ten kings. They will all be inspired by the fallen angels who were kicked out of heaven at the same time it all begins. Amen. That's why we also had the signs in the heavens, right? September 23rd, 2017, we saw the Revelation 12, 1 through chapter 1, I mean verse 1 and 2, sign in the heavens, right? But there's another part in Revelation chapter 12, right, where we see Another sign in heaven that I believe happens on the day that we get caught up, which is the sign of the great red dragon getting kicked out, standing before Israel to devour the man-child as soon as we're born. But the Bible tells us that the man-child is our pot caught up unto God, where? In the clouds as we meet him in the air and to his throne. No one comes unto the Father unless we go through the Son. 
Amen. All of us who are caught up in the harvest when Jesus Christ sticks in his sickle as he comes like lightning from east to west, all of us who are the first fruits, <laughs> right? The 144,000 and the one new man, all of us who are redeemed as first fruits, we have a new song, hallelujah as we enter into his tabernacles with thanksgiving and praise, amen. But under his feet on that day, right? Under God's feet on that day, well, it's the cloudy day, right? The greatest earthquake in human history levels the third beast kingdom, right? The hundred pound hailstones rain down from the clouds, right? Because God is causing his glorious voice to be heard, the seven thunders, right? 100 pound hailstones. And the Bible tells us that men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail, for that plague was exceedingly great, right? And the whole planet is leveled, right? The mountains are moved. The islands are shaken out of their places and no longer found, right? The whole world is shaken because everybody under God's feet is on the sand. Mm. And because they're on the sand, those who survive the greatest earthquake in human history, they're going to see what comes up out the water, Revelation chapter 13, John gives a sand view of those who are going to be left behind, right? And what comes out the water is Cetus, right? What comes out the water is Leviathan. What comes out the water is the dragon, okay? Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, right? So John represents somebody left behind right here. Because if you built your foundation on the sand, well, you're left behind. You're not on the solid rock. So John gives us the perspective of the left behind. And as everybody on the sand that's left behind, that survived the cloudy and dark day, just the beginning, well, now, once they pick themselves up off the sand, right, there's going to be somebody coming up out the sea, right? And they're going to be in fear every moment. That's what the Bible says, right? They're going to be in fear every moment okay jacob's trouble woe worth the day and i stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns and upon his heads the name of blasphemy okay i wouldn't want to be you on this day if you're left behind I wouldn't want to be you on this day if you're left behind to see the one who comes up out to sea, okay? Because it's nothing but a bunch of bad news, okay? You refuse the good news. That's why you got left behind. <laughs> you refuse the good news. Oh, yeah. Okay. The reason why you got left behind is because you refused the good news. You refused it. So now, because God had mercy on you, Okay, because when that pale horse got out that gate, ooh, he was on your behind, but he said, no, I'm not going to touch you. <laughs> because God had mercy on you. Okay, And God said, no, not that one, to the pale horse. Okay, And so God had mercy on you, and you got one more chance. Ooh, you got one more chance. Okay. But there's one last chance, nothing but a bunch of bad news. Nothing but a bunch of bad news. Okay, because it's the bad news bear. Okay, you know he got feet like a bear. Body like a leopard. Mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Puff the magic dragon live by the sea. Oh, God. So you want to be on the sand, <laughs> and because God had mercy on you, you didn't get swallowed up by the pale horse. Well, praise King Jesus that you got one last chance. Okay, you talk about you talk about the God of the second chance. My goodness, can you imagine the grace that you're gonna have? Okay, can you imagine the grace? You talk about grace. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you talk about grace. My goodness, this is this is this is a preach for for this preach for a long time though. Okay, but I'm, I'm almost done. You talk about grace <laughs> after the church age, okay? You talk, man, my goodness. You talk about grace. I'm going to talk you about some grace now. Okay. 
God has given the pale horse. When God releases the four winds, <laughs> right? God has given the pale horse mm, a charge to get one fourth of all the earth. And one fourth of all the earth, there is no grace. Lake of fire forever. That's it, that's all. Hands caught in the cooking jar, dark and cloudy day. One fourth of all the earth given over to the pale horse. No more grace. Dun da da. Hands caught in the cookie jar. Ooh, he came like a thief in the night. Ooh. He came like a thief in the night. Ooh. Okay. One fourth of all the earth. Ooh, got your hand caught in the cookie jar. He came like a thief in the night. Didn't even see him coming out of one fire and into the eternal fire. No more grace. Mm. Now, you want to talk about some grace? You got left behind and the pale horse didn't mock you out because of the grace of God. You got left behind. Okay. And you were not mocked out by the pale horse. You talk about grace. God gave you one last chance. Mm. <laughs> you talk about the God of the second chance. Mm. God gave you one last chance. Mm. My goodness. I'm talking about my Jesus, amen. I'm going to talk about him now. I'm going to talk about him now, child of God. He gave you one last chance. You talk about the chance of all chances. Okay. He gave you one last chance. But this one last chance, well, none but a bunch of bad news. Okay. Why? Because you refuse the good news. That's why you got left behind. You got one last chance, none but a bunch of bad news. Why? Because you refuse the good news. You refused it. That's why you got left behind. You refuse the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You refused it. But God, in his mercy, oh my goodness, in, mer in, in wrath, remember mercy, the Bible says. Okay. You talk about grace. In, in wrath, remember mercy. Mm. You talk about grace. Mm. God is going to give you one last chance. Okay. None but a bunch of bad news, though. But God is going to give you one last chance in the worst time in human history. No time like it before. No time like it ever again. God is going to give you one last chance. If you've been left behind, dark and cloudy day, to finally get right. And praise God, fifth seal, martyrs, many people, they're going to get right. Amen. <laughs> Praise God, fifth seal, martyrs. Many people going to get right. Amen. Praise God, fifth seal, martyrs. Many people going to get right. Okay. And the only way they going to get right is if they get left behind on the sand. That's the only way. You talk about grace. Mm. Okay. The only way they would have got right is if they would have been left behind on the sand to see the beast. That's the only way they're going to get right. right. They didn't want it right now. Okay, so they wanted to take the hard way. And they're going to get the hard way. A lot of head rolling. Okay. A lot of head rolling, but praise God that you're going to live forever. <laughs> Fifth seal, martyrs, praise God. You see, but that could all be averted right now. <laughs> if there's anybody out there that has not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, God says, come. The spirit and the bride says, come. <laughs> Jesus Christ says, come unto him, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and he will give you rest. But the question is, do you want rest? <laughs> Amen. Right now, you can come, you can rest. You ain't got to be on the sand. <laughs> right now, right here, you could have a firm foundation. You could be unmovable. You can be unshakable. You could be abounding in the work always <laughs> if you come to Jesus Christ. Right here, right now. All you have to do is call upon the one who died for you. Okay? All you have to do is believe on the one who was 
wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. You see? But the good news is that not only did he do it for you, but he also did it for me. Oh, what a savior we have in Jesus. You see, but you got to come. You got to believe on him, the one who is the God man. His name is Jesus Christ. Okay. You got to call upon him. You got to call him up. Okay. Got to call him up. But the only way to do that is to change your stinking thinking. <laughs> That's called repentance. Right, you got to come into agreement that you've sinned against the Holy God, right? and you have to turn to Jesus Christ. Right, you turning from sin, repent. Right, and when you turn from sin, repent. Right, it starts in the mind as a man thinketh of his heart, so is he. When you turn from sin, repent, you turn to the one who bore your sin, his name is Jesus Christ. You come to the foot of the cross at Calvary, okay? You come to the foot of the cross at Calvary with nothing in your hands, right? You come bankrupt as a beggar, okay? You come bankrupt as a beggar, and you cry out to the one who was crucified on that cross, right? You cry out to him, and you say, Lord Jesus, save me a sinner, okay? Cry out. You got to cry out now, okay? You got to cry out. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of the Savior. You got to cry out to him, the one with whom we have to do. His name is Jesus Christ. The question is, will you cry out? The Bible says if you uh, believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures, because Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and on the third day he rose from the dead. The Bible says if you believe, right? if you believe, confess it. Right? Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. And the Bible says you shall be saved. But the question is, do you believe? Amen. <laughs> you see, the time is ticking, okay? Time is ticking. Repent and believe the gospel. Not much time left. You saw what just happened. <laughs> okay, you saw what just happened. Right? He made his bed. Okay. The Iranian president, hey, he was a Muslim. Ain't no Muslims gonna be in the father's house. The Bible says outside are dogs. Okay. Outside is everyone who loveth to make a lie. Okay. And so <laughs> as a Muslim, and you die like that, right? Well, you're not going to be in the kingdom, guaranteed. Okay, you follow the deception of the dragon. Okay, there is no salvation in Muhammad. There is no salvation in Allah. Okay, I don't care what type of cake you want to cut. It ain't going to cut. Okay. Okay, what type of cake you want to cut, Muslim? Okay. I don't care what type of cake you want to cut. Okay, it ain't cutting. Okay. Because there is no salvation in Muhammad. There is no salvation in Allah. There is no salvation in Islam. Okay? It's a lie from the pit of hell. And hey, a hardline Muslim who dies as a Muslim, well, he down there with the rich man and Pharaoh forever. Okay? He down there with Pharaoh and the rich man forever. Okay? That's it. That's all. But that don't have to be you. So Jesus Christ says, come. Please keep me in your prayer. I'm working through the book of Revelation. I want to finish this study that I started a long time ago. Hopefully, as the Lord wills and as the more time we have, amen, I'm going to complete it through the power of the Holy Spirit. Right? Because we're still in this window of time, and we see how things are heating up now, especially with what just happened. Okay? Especially with what just happened. Okay, we see Iran is going to be the catalyst. You already know, because the Bible said so. Right? Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me 
soul. Maranatha. Amen.